Welcome back to Death Toll Racing. We're jumping right in where we left off on episode 8. Uh, we are now uh, on to the, that is the blow-off valve. Um, and then I added a port uh, on the pressure side, on the constant pressure side, that I'm going to actually feed my wastegates from. Uh, that will be the boost reference that the wastegates will get. So I did that right there. So it's a real short run. Um, this kind of unique system with turbos in the back like that. Um, this way, it's a real short run back there. And those will be plumbed up just like I described in the last episode in episode eight. Um, we had a diagram and everything on that episode on how that's done. So uh, I got the new blow-off valve put in and we ran a lineup in the engine compartment and now I'm going to start on the fuel filter. So we shouldn't have a lot of fuel in here. Oh, apparently our one-way valve works good. Um, we shouldn't, shouldn't have had a lot of fuel in there since we have had the fuel tank out and both sides of the line disconnected, but uh, that had more fuel in there than I thought. Let's get some rags. Usually I like doing this stuff at the end of the day because uh, I hate smelling like this all day. All right, so the new assembly ends up being quite a bit longer um, and I want to try to make this thing tighter into the frame um, as well so that we have a little bit more room for that air filter. So uh, it, it ends up taking a little bit more uh, to get this thing in there than I, than I really anticipated. Um, I was really hoping it would be a, a simpler job, but I ended up having to kind of reroute some of the hard line uh, and stuff on the uh, between the fuel tank and the fuel filter side. Um, and that line, I think after we get this thing all tuned and stuff, I may, I may go under there and replace that line and make our new one. So now I'm just going to throw our new oil filter on so that we can set this thing down, uh, pour some oil in it, uh, run our, our boost reference line for the throttle body and go on from there. Uh, this is a T. So I, I found where I was going to, um, access manifold pressure. Um, I, I at first was thinking about taking that elbow off, um, the entire intake elbow off and drilling and tapping that. Um, and then I realized that uh, I'll just tee the line that goes down to the brake booster, uh, which will work on this one because the one-way valve on the brake booster is at the booster itself, um, which is fairly common, but uh, probably not always common uh, or always the scenario. Um, so I just, I just teed it there and uh, that should work absolutely perfect. So I got a T in the line running up to that already that I pre-installed. Um, so now I'm just adding our gauge uh, line to it. So I, I got that and I got it through the firewall and I'm just cutting two little slots in the top of the steering column, which you can't really see there. Um, but then I put a hose clamp through it. Um, and that's how I'm going to temporarily attach our boost gauge. Um, now I need to go to the junkyard and find a new one of those covers because I put two little cuts in it. But I don't know where I'm going to mount that thing permanently. I, I was kind of looking everywhere and I, I'd like to have it out of the way so no one sees it. Um, and then I guess once I get it tuned, I really don't need it anymore. So uh, it, you know, it, it, it is nice for, for referencing it, but it's, it's not something that you actually have to stare at all the time. Um, so where I'm doing all 520 Schaefer's, um, and it ends up taking seven quarts on this thing with our new oil system. Okay. Here goes nothing. Prime the fuel pumps a few times. It sounds like it's doing all right.
gaggy. All right, so that's exactly what I was expecting. It's running insanely rich uh, because of the huge injectors. So let's lift it up and make sure we don't have any leaks. All right, guys, um, I do not see anything that's leaking. Uh, everything looks bone dry and exactly the way it was. Yeah, I see no oil leaks anywhere. Nothing popped off. Um, our compression fitting held just fine. Um, and so that, that's not leaking. Um, the threads aren't leaking. And then our return line doesn't appear to be leaking either. So um, that's good. So I, I feel pretty good to go ahead and set it down. All right, guys. So uh, I did figure out a trick on making it run. Um, while it, it'll run idle, so you can move it around. Um, and it's not idling, it's about 2,500 RPM and that's just making a massive vacuum leak. Uh, then you compensate for the um, huge injectors. It runs really high, the computer tries to compensate for it, starts uh, kind of moving around a little bit, but at least it allows you to move it around. Um, you can't hit the gas though, it just dies in my scenario. Um, so if, if you guys don't have a way of towing your car to the dyno, which is the next step for this one, um, I would recommend not putting your injectors in yet and if you have really good self-control, drive it up there without ever creating boost. Um, if you don't have good self-control, uh, disconnect it here uh, and put an air filter on there and just let the boost spray into your engine compartment or blow into your engine compartment um, and drive it up that way on your stock injectors. And then when you get there, either have, have your tuner guys swap them out, which is, is easy. They shouldn't, if they charge you a bunch of money to do that, they're assholes. Um, uh, or, or do it in the parking lot, uh, which you could do too. Uh, especially if you prep it by taking off that engine lift plate. Remember, there's a lift plate back there. If you leave that off and have your bolt down in the manifold, um, then changing your injectors and your spark plugs and stuff is, is relatively easy. You just unbolt the throttle body, uh, and take the two bolts out per side on the injectors, pop them out, put the new ones in, and you're good to go. So uh, pretty easy to, easy to swap them out there if you want to do it that way. Um, that would be what I recommend if you can't tow it up there uh, to do it that way. I would not recommend running it like I did. I was trying to play with those waste gates um, just to make sure they weren't going to just be blowing off nonstop. Um, they appear to be fine. So I think we're in good shape and uh, we'll see uh, when we get up there. Hopefully I don't have to take those out and change the springs on them. So when we take it up there, I will be bringing the springs with. Uh, I just, I just uh, hopefully won't have to use them. So. Um, Okay, so that's it. I am at Chad's Mercy now for dyno tuning. So the next video out is either going to be tuning it or it's going to be doing the, J the uh, Transgo shift kit and we'll talk about the J-Mod stuff in the transmission. Um, so I I'm not sure which is going to be next. Uh, it it's up to him uh, on when he wants to get me in there. So um, yeah, so anyway, thanks for watching. We will see you again later this week doing something. <laughs>